Okay, so problem number three will be a truss problem, and in this class we've only looked at method of section, so it'll be method of sections, truss problem, determine the forces in these three movers, C, J, G, J, C, J, and C, D. So C, J, G, G J, C, J, and C, D. So do you see, I think you'll be able to see where, where you need to cut it, and if you can cut it so that it only goes through three uh, members, then that, that's ideal because you have three equations for each section. If for some reason you have to cut it and it goes through four members, then you kind of have to do a kind of a combination of method of sections and method of joints. Uh, we won't do that. I'll, I'll, I'll make it so that you just cut through three sections, solve for the unknowns and those. All right, so remember for trusses, trusses are, are these frames that are all composed of two force members. Each of these members the force inside each of these members is just along the member, and it's either in compression or tension. Uh, so the main thing is the whole truss is in equilibrium. So for the whole truss, I could sum the forces in x equals 0, sum the forces in y equals 0, sum the moments equals 0. Uh, but also every section of the truss. So, so for instance, this section right here, if I only looked at this section, it would be in equilibrium. Or, or maybe if I only looked at this section, it would be in equilibrium. And so when you cut through it and only look at one section, you expose the force in the three members that you cut through. And when you expose those forces, you can solve for those forces. Okay, but uh, before we get started, I, you know, I, I could look ahead. You know, I could think about, okay, I think I'm just going to keep this section uh, and I'm going to expose these three forces, right? I cut here and expose... Uh, anyway, I need to solve for E, Y, and E, X. I need to solve for E, Y, and E, X. So I'm going to look at the whole free body diagram. Whole free body diagram. Uh, I've got an A, Y over here, uh, an E, X, and E, Y. Since I'm, since I'm going to think ahead and I'm only going to keep this side, then I really need E, X, and E, Y to solve for. Uh, how can I solve for EX? Something the forces in X uh, would be EX is equal to zero. So even though it could have, there's a pin right there. That's why I have an EX and EY. There's only a ro roller at um, A, so I only have an AY. Um, it could have an EX, but it is zero. Does that kind of make sense? That There's nothing, no forces that are pushing it left and right. So there's nothing that needs to push it back left or right. Uh, and then I could, let's see, sum the forces in y, a, y, minus a thousand, minus a thousand. I could just say minus four thousand, couldn't I, here? Uh, plus e, y equals zero. All right, but, but what I'm getting at, summing the moments, probably summing the moments about a would let me solve for e, y. Um, but the one I'm following here, uh, I'm going to sum the moments about e, uh, to kind of let, I don't know, let me solve for A, Y, and then with A, Y, I could get E, Y. All right, some of the ones about E. E, X goes straight through it. E, Y goes straight, straight through it. This 1,000-pound force is acting 10 feet away, creating a positive moment. Uh, this 1,000-pound force is acting 20 feet away. This 1,000-pound force is acting 30. And this 1,000-pound force is acting 40. And then... A, Y is acting 40, and that's creating a negative moment. The rest of those were all counterclockwise, 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 counterclockwise. A, Y is clockwise. That's why it's negative. Equals zero. That only has one unknown. I can solve for um, A, Y. Sorry, I've got A, Y is equal to 2,500 pounds. Plug that back in up here. E, Y is equal to 1,500 pounds. And that's really the only one that I wanted. But especially if you're going to go back and double check your answer, um, AY is 2,500. And so if I came from this side of it using AY of 2,500, you know, I, I should still get the same answers as what I'm going to be doing coming from this side. So coming from this side, cutting it right here. So, hey, do the whole free body diagram before you even cut it. The whole free body diagram doesn't have the force in G, J, C, J, and C, D. That doesn't show up. It doesn't show up until now that I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to decide, I decided to go ahead and look at the right half of it. You could have 
cut it and looked at the left half of it. We should still get the same answer. So if I look right here at this right half, I have an EX of 0. Um, I have an EY of 1,500. Don't forget, whatever forces are already acting there, that 1,000-pound force is already acting there. So draw it going down. Now, I expose this force in CD, and I know it is in that direction. I don't know if it's left or right. You know, I don't know if it's compression or tension. Just guess one. If your answer comes out negative, you guess wrong. I generally like to get guess tension first. Uh, and then if my answer comes out negative, then I'll know, oh, I guess wrong. It was, it was actually compression. So force CD right here. Force in CJ right there. And then the force in uh, GJ right there. Uh, this, you see, this is a 30 degree truss. Uh, that's a 30 degree angle. This one right here, don't assume too much. Uh, but it's the same as that angle, and that angle is the same as that angle. Yes, this one is also 30 degrees right there. So that, there's my free body diagram for that section. There's my free body diagram for that section. So now I think I'm ready to sum the forces in x equals 0, sum the forces in y equals 0, sum the moments e equals 0. Sum of the forces in x. Uh, negative FCD, and all of that is in the X. Negative FCJ, but the cosine 30. And same thing, negative FGJ, cosine 30. That negative doesn't mean compression or tension. That negative just means left, right? Now, when you are, and I'll talk about this, when now when you're summing the forces, sum your forces according to your axes. You know, you can define your own axes, that's fine but sum the forces according to those axes and stay consistent. Uh, that, I think, is e equals zero. Way too many unknowns to solve right away, so now let me sum the forces in the y direction. Negative 1,000 is pointed down, right? Negative 1,000 and positive 1,500. Um, Okay, I see my solution is going to be wrong here, so we'll have to calculate this out here with me. Uh, negative 1,000 plus 1,500. Uh, then FCJ is down. FCJ sine 30 is down, but FGJ sine 30 is up. And set those equal to zero. Set those equal to zero. Okay. Uh, but then, you know, I, you really might want to think about getting into a habit. You might start your equation by summing the moments uh, because that's the equation. You've got some choices here. You can sum your moments about particular points. Uh, try to find um, a point that two out of three of the forces go through so that you can um, solve... Um, solve your equations. Okay, so my first instinct is to sum the moments about J because FCJ and FGJ go straight through it right here. FCJ and F... So I'm going to sum my moments about point J right here. Sum the moments about J. FCJ goes straight through it. FGJ goes straight through it. This 1000 also goes straight through it. Um, so FCD is acting a distance... They don't exactly give me that distance, but it's a 30 degree angle. The base is 10. Um, and here, yeah, I'm going to need to redo this one. Sorry. All right, do, the, this, do this one with me. If this is 10, I've got quite a few mistakes here. I apologize. If this is 10 and this is 30 degrees, then tangent 30 would be that height over 10. So what is 10 tan 30, uh, 5.77, 5.774, uh, okay, and that is creating a negative moment, all right, then we've got 1500, which is acting a distance of 10, creating a positive moment, I think that's it, right, correct me if I'm wrong, definitely could be, so 1500 times 10 divided by, uh, Let's see, 1,500 times 10 
divided by 5.774, uh, 29. So the force in CD came out to be positive 25, 97. Point nine uh, pounds came out positive, so positive means I guessed correctly, and I guessed tension. So there's uh, F C D. And double check me here. So I'm doing this on the fly. I know one of these is going to be correct, but that F C D may not be. Uh, and it's not even F C D, is it? Yes, sorry, F C D. All right. So here's the problem. It's not that big of a problem, but when I plug it in right here, I still have two unknowns and two equations. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not too bad, but then I've got two, un, two equations with two unknowns, uh, so I can solve uh, for that right there. Maybe write FCJ is equal to something FGJ plus some value, and plug that in right here. Uh, then I've only got left with F cj and fgj um, and i could solve fgj would be negative 2000 pounds what does that negative mean it means i guessed wrong so fgj is 2000 pounds compression fgj is 2000 pounds compression all right then I'm ready to plug this back into that equation. If you're going backwards to an equation you've already written, if you're going backwards to an equation you've already written, you, you would plug in that negative 2,000 because you drew this, when you wrote that equation, you kind of you know, had already drawn it the wrong way. So I'd plug in negative 2,000 times sine 30, uh, so negative 1,000 plus 1,500 uh, minus thousand uh, negative 500 and then bring that FCJ divided by sine 30 1000 uh, but it would be a positive FCJ positive a thousand double check me here uh, pounds which would be a thousand pounds in tension thousand pounds so, so that that's the problem one thing I want to mention, I don't want to confuse you too much, but I, I could have summed my moments about a different point besides point J. Point J was good, it's all for FCD, but maybe even better would have been solving about point C over here. Even though it's off my section, I could have summed my moments about point C. Uh, that way, only FGJ would be my only unknown, and then I could solve straight into my y equation and solve for fcj. I don't know, would have eliminated the problem with having two equations, two unknowns, which isn't a terrible problem. Um, I think it's a problem that y'all can and should be able to solve. All right, so so one other option, and maybe to double check your work. Hey, let's tell them about c, just, just to see what um, my answers uh, would be. You could also sum your moments about um, E, which, I don't know, maybe that's actually the easiest way to do to do it. Um, all right, another way to double-check your answer is to come and w what if you had kept this right side, of, the left side of it, sorry. What if you had kept this left side of it, right, and we had 2,500, we had 1,000, another thousand, another thousand, uh, then what is FCD? What is FCJ? FGJ? You should still get the exact same answer. So 1,000 tension, 2,597 tension, 2,000 compression. And double check me with those uh, to make sure I'm telling you the right answers um, for this. All right, so take a step back. We looked at the whole free body diagram, solve for what's happening at pin E and, and roller A, uh, and then we broke it up into sections. We cut it, we exposed FCD, FCJ, FGJ, and three equations to solve for those three unknowns. Three equations and three unknowns is probably a good, probably a good sign, you know, that you're on the right track. If you have four equations, sorry, if you have, you won't have four equations, you have three equilibrium equations. If you have four unknowns, 
and three only three equations solved, then, then you can't solve something went wrong. You, you got to do it a different method. Okay.